Hello and welcome to day 53 of 100 Days of Tonalism. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy. And the study that I'm doing today is by Georgia Ness. It's called Roman Campagna. Um, we've done a lot of Georgia Nesses. If you've uh, been with us for a while, you're aware that uh, we're pretty much after, I think, about uh, 33 or so. So it's uh, nearly a third maybe a third exactly, I don't know. Um, this particular painting I've, uh, I've known about for quite a while. It's, you know, relatively famous. Um, I quite like the composition of it. This is what I would consider mid-period uh, Ines, which is uh, pretty cool since uh, the last Ines painting we were doing, we were talking about uh, referencing uh, the book by Nikolai Sikorsky. <laughs> called Georgia Ness. There's a link in the blog if uh, you can't get the name right. But uh, he wrote a book. I believe it came out in uh, the early 90s. And uh, it's a very good book. I recommend getting it. It's actually out of print now, but still quite easy to find. Um, where we were at before was that uh, Ness had just returned from uh, Paris, having um, discovered and inter in interacted with Barbizon paintings, uh, was... Uh, back in the U.S. basically trying his best to integrate these innovations of the Barbizon painters into his own work. So, and uh, I think where we left it off last time was uh, basically, you know, he was just being ignored, if not outright uh, ridiculed. And so we pick up here on page 33, and this may have been ignored by the critics, but he did not lack sympathetic patronage. Most of the paintings he exhibit, exhibited at the Academy from 1856 to the end of the decade were lent by their owners, as they had not been earlier, when they were, were most often for sale or lent by the artist. It is, a, it is an interesting group of lenders, and I will not get into all these names. Um, uh, ba -ba -bum -bum. These collectors were on the whole more sophisticated than Inessa's earlier patrons, and for that reason perhaps more capable of understanding his revised art. By the same token, one name that no longer appears as a lender of Inessa's picture is Ogden Haggerty, su suggesting that he once liked uh, what he once liked about Inessa's art he no longer found in it. Nor did Inessa's work suffer on the secondary market at the sale of the Burt collection in 1857 is olden time brought two hundred dollars which was a lot of money back in uh, 1857 and this would not or could not merely imitate Barbizon style but sought instead to understand its essence and accommodate it to his earlier art and this is the same th sort of thing I'm doing only as a contemporary artist looking back I'm uh, endeavoring to incorporate the Barbizon slash tonalist style into the modern method and approach of painting and a lot of that to uh, what the series is about is about a modern painter um, basically doing work that was older but not trying to do it in an old way hence such a hybrid as uh, Juanita River of 1856 in which the Barbizon colorism carried almost literally beyond anything in Barbizon art itself, had been laid over a compositional structure that in the arrangement of framing trees and winding rivers is virtually the same as that in such a more overtly conventional early painting as March of the Crusaders. Um, so that's uh, you know, a little bit about his early Barbizon influence and um, you know, it's very interesting. It'd be awesome to be able to go back there and really talk to the man himself and see, you know, what why it is he went from something that was successful to something that was completely up. We've got a few um, extra moments in this video over where I usually am, um, mostly because there's quite a lot of complexity in this picture. And also, um, I've always been very interested in the textures and... Uh, you know, the sky in this picture as well, so I definitely wanted to uh, spend more time getting that sort of in this feeling, and I have to say that one of the main things that I got from doing this entire series is definitely um, 
a greater uh, appreciation of not just glazing but of dry brushing and uh, if you look back oh I don't know about five six posts ago I was talking about both of those and about uh, direct and indirect painting um, and you know uh, there's a lot to be said for just going in and painting something directly and as a matter of fact I was uh, doing that on my 5x7 studies almost exclusively and I'd say about half of the studies in this series were uh, done well not actually technically not directly since I have a drawing underneath that's right off the bat an indirect uh, painting direct painting means that you grab the canvas you tone it you do your painting and uh, you keep at it until you're done you know and that's not how I work and uh, you know you never never say never you never know I might uh, uh, want to get back into doing that sort of thing but uh, these days I like a more calculated approach which is actually um, I'm referencing in the today's blog post so go ahead and have a read of that if you like uh, I'm talking about my initial drawing process and my painting process in general Anyway, I can see we're getting close to the end here. Uh, thanks for joining me for day 53. Be sure to join us tomorrow for day 54. And uh, I look forward to seeing you then. And meanwhile, stay out of trouble and take good care.